Hello and welcome to this free preview lecture series of my on-demand IP electrical and computer exam preparation course. In this lecture, we are going to go over some additional practice problems related to logarithms. I've created this lecture for my students who are enrolled in my on-demand IP electrical and computer exam preparation course to help them get some additional practice related to logarithms because logarithms is one of those topics that you might be tempted to just use and use a calculator and rely on your calculator, which is fine but you need to know the basics, you need to know the identities and the rules and laws around logarithm. Because if a problem is asked with some variables, it may not be that simple and straightforward. And that's what we're going to do in this lecture. We're gonna start with some of the easy problems and make our way to some of the more difficult practice problems. But before we dive into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Hello and welcome to this lecture on the topic of logarithms in which we are going to do some additional practice problems related to logarithms. In the previous lecture we discussed how logarithmic functions are basically inverse to an exponential function and logarithms can have different base. Logarithm with a base 10 is called a common log and logarithms with base e are called the natural log. e is a constant and has a value of roughly 2.718 I believe. In this lecture, we are going to make use of several laws of logarithm and apply them to different practice problems and that will help you get a better understanding of logarithms. Let us start with a relatively simple straightforward problem. I recommend that you go ahead and solve each and every one of these problems on your own and then see how I go about solving the problems. So in problem number one, we are being asked to solve the logarithmic equation and basically when it says that solve the logarithmic equation you're basically solving it for the unknown variable and the unknown variable in this case is x. In order to solve this problem we are going to make use of this law of logarithm. It is basically telling us that when we have a log with a base b and we're taking the log of x and it is equal to a constant we can actually convert this into an exponential form. And what I've basically done over here is that I've raised b to the power of c, okay? So you take the base and raise it to the power of the, uh, raise it to the constant on the right hand side of the equation. It becomes b raised to power c, and that is equal to x. So this is what we are going to deploy in this given problem. So according to the problem statement, we have log base three of x minus four, which is equal to four. So what we can do is that we can raise the base to the power of this constant. And that's what I'm doing over here, three raised to power four. And then this is left on the left hand side. Okay, x minus four, whatever you're taking the log of remains on the left hand side. So we have x minus four, which is now equal to three raised to power four. The next two steps are pure math. So we have x minus four equal to three raised to power four, which means x is equal to three raised to power four plus four, and that gives us the value of x equal to 85. Let us now take a look at another practice problem. In this problem, we are being asked to solve the logarithmic equation. We have a log base two on the left-hand side and a log base two on the right-hand side, and we are taking the log of x squared minus two x on the left-hand side, and the log of 5x minus 12 on the right hand side. In this case, we are going to make use of this property of logarithm that when we have log base a of x equal to log base a of y, that would basically mean that your x is equal to y because both the bases are the same and you're taking logarithm on both left hand side and the right hand side. The other way to look at it is that we can take anti-log on both left hand side and right hand side and that would basically cancel out the logarithms and you're left with x equal to y. So similarly, when we take anti-logs on left hand side and right hand side, we are simply left with x squared minus 2x on the left hand side and 5x minus 12 on the right hand side and this becomes a simple quadratic equation. When you solve this quadratic equation, you end up with two possible values of x. So the first value is three and the second value is four. It is always a good practice to substitute your answers back into the logarithm to verify them. And there are two reasons for doing that. We want to make sure that whatever answers that we have obtained for our value of x would make sense 
for the given um, expression that's one and the second thing is that any answer that results in a logarithm of a zero or a negative number is not a valid answer so you have to discard that so let's see what happens in this case so we have x equal to 3 I substitute x equal to 3 in this equation on the left hand side and the right hand side and I end up with log base 2 of 3 on the left hand side and log base 2 of 3 on the right hand side so since our left hand side is equal to right hand side and this does not involve us taking either a log base 2 of a 0 or a negative number that basically means that x is equal to 3 is a valid logarithmic answer lo valid solution for this particular logarithmic expression and we can do the same thing for x equal to 4 when you substitute x equal to 4 in the left hand side of the equation and the right hand side of the equation you're going to end up with log base 2 of 8 on the left hand side and log base 2 of 8 on the right hand side since your left hand side is equal to right hand side this is a valid solution and moreover this does not involve taking a log of 0 or a log of negative number so that's why both x equal to 3 and x equal to 4 are valid solutions to the given problem problem number 3 is asking us to solve the given logarithmic equation we have log of 1 minus x and we are subtracting log of 1 plus x from it and on the right hand side we have a constant so another thing that is worth pointing out is that if you don't see a base of log in the problem statement you can always assume that the base is 10 in this problem we are going to make use of this particular property of logarithm that we have discussed in the previous lecture so when we have log base b and we are taking a logarithm of x divided by y that is equal to log base b of x minus log base b of y so you can see that we have a negative sign in between these two i can convert that into a division so this can be translated into log of 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x and then since I have a base of 10 over here, I can use the property that we discussed in problem number one. I can move 10 over here by raising it to the power of the constant on the right hand side. So this becomes 10 raised to power 2 and I'm left with 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x. So 10 raised to power 2 is equal to 100. And you, when you solve this equation for x, you will end up with the value of x equal to minus 99 divided by 101. As I mentioned earlier, it's always a good practice to substitute your answer back into the original expression. So we ended up with x equal to minus 99 divided by 101. So when I substitute this value of x in here and I solve this, I'm going to end up with log 200 divided by 2. That basically means that I'm dealing with a log base 10 of 100 and that is equal to 2. Now you can see that this 2 is basically your left hand side is equal to the right hand side which is also 2 so this basically means that x is equal to minus 99 divided by 101 is a correct answer for this particular logarithmic value and although the value of x is negative what you need to make sure is that within the logarithmic these brackets the arguments that they are positive okay so just because x has a negative value does not mean that this is an incorrect answer or invalid answer you actually have to substitute x back in here and then you see that whether in each of these brackets you're ending up with a zero or a negative value since we're not ending up with a zero or a negative value in the first bracket we have 200 divided by 101 which is good in the second bracket we have 2 divided by 101 which is also a positive number so that's good and that basically means that this is a valid answer and moreover your left hand side is equal to your right hand side so this is a valid solution let us now take a look at practice problem number four. We are being asked to solve this logarithmic equation. We have log base three of x plus 25 minus log base three of x minus one. And on the right hand side, we have three. In order to solve this problem, we can again make use of the same property of logarithm that we discussed in problem number three. Log base b of x divided by y is equal to log base b of x minus log base b of y. So in this case, we have log base 3 of x plus 25, which uh, from which we are subtracting log base 3 of x minus 1. So that basically becomes x plus 25 divided by x minus 1, log base 3 on the left hand side. So I can raise this base, which is 3, 
to the constant on the right hand side which is 3 and when I do that I end up with x plus 25 divided by x minus 1 equal to 3 raised to the power 3 which is 27 and now I have a simple linear equation which I can solve for x and I'll end up with a value of 2. As always, we verify our answer by substituting the value of x in the original logarithmic expression. And then you are going to end up with log base 3 of 27 minus log base 3 of 1. Log base 3 of 1 is equal to 0. Log base 3 of uh, 27 is equal to 3. So the left hand side of your equation is 3. And when you compare it to the right hand side of your equation, that is also 3. So we are good there. Moreover, we did not end up taking log of any zero or negative value. So that basically means that x equal to 2 is a valid answer. Problem number 5 is interesting because it does not directly involve logarithms. It involves exponentials. And going back to our earlier discussion, logarithms can be considered as an inverse of exponentials. So whenever we have a variable that is ending up in the exponential, the best way to solve such type of problems is to use logarithm as we will do in this problem. So we can take logarithm on both left and right hand side of the equation. So when we take the logarithm on the left hand side and the right hand side, we can make use of this property of logarithm, which says that whenever we have a log base b of x, which is raised to a constant, we can actually move this constant over as we saw in the previous lecture. And this becomes c times log base b of x. So when I do this, to the left hand side you can see that this exponent can be moved over it doesn't necessarily have to be a constant it can be an exponent so when i move the exponent over i have 2x plus 1 now it's being multiplied with log uh, of 3 and then i have x minus 2 which was over here i move it over and then it's being multiplied with log of 2. I've taken a common log which has a base 10. You can take any log. It doesn't matter what base it is. The answer is still going to work out the same. And log base 10 of 3 is 0.47712. Log base 10 of 2 is 0.301. You could have taken a natural log as well because it will work out the same on both left and right hand side of the equation. So it doesn't matter as long as you're taking the log okay, and properly using these properties. So now it is a little bit messy because I have these decimal points on the left hand side and the right hand side. When you go about solving this equation and do the math, you're going to end up with a value of x equal to minus 1.65. So one of the steps that I skipped in the last problem was that I did not substitute x equal to minus 1.65 into the original equation. You can substitute in the original equation and then you will see that the left hand side would be equal to the right hand side. Let's move on to problem number six. In this problem, we are being asked to solve this equation. And again, you can see that the unknown, which is x, is actually appearing in the exponent. So whenever the unknown variable is appearing in the exponent, the first thing that you should think of is logarithm. Over here, e is basically a constant. And the equation is e raised to the power 2x minus 2 times e raised to the power x. And on the right hand side also, we have a constant. So these are the steps that we are going to go through for this practice problem. In order to solve it, um, you got to be a little bit careful and I explain this later. I ended up making a mistake in the original solution. So we have e raised to power 2x, as I mentioned, minus 2 times e raised to power x equal to 15. So we have to do a substitution over here. We'll assume that e raised to power x is equal to y and e raised to power 2x is equal to y squared. So when you substitute these values, it becomes a quadratic equation. And then you solve for this quadratic equation and you end up with y is equal to 5 or y is equal to minus 3. We know that our y is equal to e raised to power x. So e raised to power x is either going to be 5 or it's going to be minus 3. So this is not possible because e is a positive number and it's being raised to an exponent. And whenever something is being raised to exponent like this, you cannot end up with a negative value. So the valid solution over here is e raised to the power x equal to 5. So we are left with e raised to the power x is equal to 5. Now this is pretty simple. I'm going to take natural log on both sides. As I mentioned earlier, I'm taking natural log because we're dealing with e and it will help us with our calculations. So ln of e raised to the power x is equal to ln of 5. I'm just going to bring x over here 
as we've seen in the previous problems that becomes x times ln of e is equal to 5 ln of e is equal to 1 that's because whenever we are taking a log of a variable or number b which has a base of b it is always equal to 1 so when we're dealing with ln e that's basically log base e of e and that ends up being 1 so we left with x equal to ln 5 now we can substitute this back into the original equation and you can verify that when you make that substitution your left hand side is going to be equal to the right hand side and this is a mistake that i was talking about so you might be tempted to do a ln of e raised to power 2x minus 2 times e raised to power x uh, take ln on both left and right hand sides and do this well this is not possible because whenever you're taking a log base a of b minus c it's actually not equal to log base a of b minus log base a of uh, c okay so if you want the right hand side to be this then your left hand side should be b divided by c so this would have been possible this would have been possible if we were dealing with e raised to the power 2x divided by 2 times e raised to the power x then we could have converted this into this right but since we are dealing with e raised to the power 2x minus 2 times e raised to the power x which is this situation this is not equal to this so be careful with that in this lecture we went through several practice problems and we pretty much used all of these laws and identities of logarithm and i also made emphasis put emphasis on the fact that you should always substitute the value of x back into the original logarithm for two reasons reason number one is to make sure that your left hand side is equal to your right hand side and reason number two is that we want to make sure that the answer is valid especially when you have a quadratic equation where x can have two values okay um, x1 and x2 sometimes maybe one of these values would result in an invalid answer because it would require us calculating the logarithm of zero or a negative number which is basically in undefined and also when you are able to establish that left hand side is equal to right hand side it will give you a peace of mind that your calculation is correct if you found this preview lecture helpful I am confident that you will also greatly benefit from the full course that contains over 150 lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCES F Electrical and Computer Exam Specification. You will also get access to tons of quizzes and mini exams in this course that will help you get additional practice along with a bonus full length computer simulated practice exam. This streamlined and well reviewed course comes with an amazing 30 day full refund policy, no questions asked. On top of all this, I have also included a special discount link in the text section of this video. 